won't be long before we'll all get back out here, get our tents out, do a bit of walking. Anyway, let's get on with it. Right then, I did say at the end of my last video that I was going to do a bit of a video on jackets, waterproof ability, breathability. So I've opened a can of worms here, I know I have. I've just, anyway, I'll get on with it. I've just got a selection of jackets there that I own. For instance, there's a bag house, there's a cheap trespass I usually use crag uppers so there's a green crag uppers there blue crag uppers there's a bark coloured crag uppers the red and black one there is a regatta there's another crag uppers in between the one at the end the blue one is a keeler jacket anyway so that's that's my well half my collection of jackets I mean everyone will have a collection of jackets but I'll get to the nitty gritty in the tech. So we'll use this Crag Hopper's classic coat to explain the hydrostatic head. It's expressed in millimetres, you'll see it on the side. On the bottom of your sleeve maybe, or the side of your coat. There you see that 15,000 there. That represents millimetres 15,000. Basically it just represents the maximum height of a vertical column of water placed over the fabric until you get seepage through material what I mean by that is so that's a 15,000 mil hydrostatic head that'll take a 15 meter column of water before water starts to ingress inside the coat and they used to pour it down in tubes years ago but they don't fanny about like that now. They use a pressure machine. When it gets to the pressure of a height of 15 metres, then that coat, that's it. It's a 15,000 hydrostatic head. It'll hold 15 metres of water, basically. That's how it works. So that last coat... That I had to set a head rate in a 15,000 mil. That's real high, that. That'll it'll go through most weather. The thing is about hydrostatic head, it's a rating for a material, static. Let's say for a tent, a tent has to have a 1,000 millimeter hydrostatic head. It's a legal requirement to be called waterproof, but your tent doesn't move. You're not putting no pressure anywhere. So a tent, you only need, I mean, probably three, th three to five thousand is going to be a good waterproof for a tent. At the end of the day, it's just sat there. There's no pressure points. Like your elbows, inside your elbows, outside your elbows, your shoulders, your pockets. It's the pressure points, basically, where water will get in. You're making more pressure. You're exceeding the hardest at the head of the material. Let's go on, to, uh, go on to membranes, because that's not the outside of the material I'm talking about there, the hydrostatic head. It's the actual membrane that's laminated in to the material on the inside. You'll see a shiny. If you open your coat up and have a look inside through the mesh, you'll see like a shiny laminate. That's the membrane. We get all sorts of membranes. You know, at the end of the day, you get Isotex, Sportex event neo shell but the most common one that everyone has heard of is gore-tex well, gore-tex is laminated inside the coat sometimes there's three layers two layers whatever and that the gore-tex membrane is a ptfe which is a polytetrafluorothene ethylene laminate whatever that means they're all much of the same, they're all samey, all these membranes, doesn't matter what you get, they're all copy Gore-Tex at the end of the day. Gore-Tex is supposed to be the best. Anyway, I would say you, you probably want a coat, if you're in the Lake District, Peak District, you want a coat, I would go for at least 
8,000 hydrostatic head. Mainly most of my coats are between 10 and 15,000. I do a lot of shit like on the mowers, so I do a lot of work and that. So you really need that. Another thing we'll get on to is breathability. I'll just have a breather. Right. Breathability is measured differently than your hydrostatic head. The breathability is the Elsine abbreviation MVTR, which is a moisture vapour transmission, which means the amount of water vapour passing through a square metre of fabric over 24 hours. You'll see it on a coat represented, for example, as a, a 3000 G. The G stands for grams. That's the amount of weight that your coat is going to let through water vapour, basically sweat. And to get, I won't go too far into detail, that's just, that's G over M squared, which is grams over metres squared and the time it takes. So they're measured over that. So a coat that's 3000 breathability G rating, it's going to be able to shed over 24 hours, 3000 grams of sweat. So if you were to look at the membrane, your waterproof breathability membrane inside your coat under a microscope, you'd see it would be full of holes. And how it doesn't let water in is that a water droplet, a molecular droplet of water, is larger than the holes in the membrane, so therefore it can't get through. That's what makes it waterproof in the first place. It's just a, a matter of size. The water droplets are too big. To get through. Similarly, the water vapour droplets can pass through the membrane from the inside because they're smaller than the holes of the membrane. So they can pass through and they pass through by the heat of your body expels the water vapour through the membrane, through the membrane to the outside of your coat where it dries in the wind, sun, whatever. So in a nutshell, that's your breathability rating and your waterproof rating. Now we'll get on to the DWR. DWR is a durable water repellent finish on all coats. It's just a finish and it, it wears off. When you get a new coat, you'll see that all the water beads onto your coat. I'll show you an example of that in a minute. So here's an example of the DWR finish. You pour water on it and it'll bead like that. I'll pick it up in a minute, you'll watch the water bead off. When it stops beading off, your coat will wet out. You need to reapply that finish. You can buy some tech stuff. I'll show you in a minute. There you go. So here's the stuff you buy. You just put it in your washing machine with water. Do not put soap powder in. That'll re-coat the finish on your coat. When I'm talking about tracking, about water, tracking up through clothing, clothing under your coat, the lining of your coat, inside your sleeve, at the back, anything sticking out, here's an example of tracking. So imagine this is, say your shirt hanging out the back of your, your coat or your cuff hanging out the front. It comes into contact with water. It's the water. See the, can you see the water creeping up the longer it's in contact with the water, the more it'll creep up your coat. And then there you are, it's getting towards your elbow. You're getting wetter and wetter. You think your coat's leaking, but it's not. It's tracking off another material. 